Are you curious if the new tier 4 companion cavalry unit is worth unlocking? Well then I have the video for you. In this video I'm going to be going over the stats, skills, and attributes of this unit, as well as giving you some tips over some gameplay footage so you guys can see how you should be using them in game. If this is your first introduction to Conqueror's Blade, check out the video description below and use my affiliate link to download the game, as well as use the new gift code that's part of this new creator program that you can redeem in-game for additional rewards. It would mean a lot to me if you use that. But if not, then just go ahead and enjoy the video. And with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the stat skills and attributes for this new unit. So let's begin by going over the attributes of this unit and compare it to the most meta tier four purple cav unit that we can compare it to, which I would say is probably Dagger Axe Lancers. So just to go over this briefly, I'm not gonna read through all these, but just some important callouts and attributes here. So they have health of 8,500, strength 27 units in the unit. Um, they cost 205 leadership, which is down by 10 in the current season. They have 9.8 speed, piercing armor pin 1535, slashing armor pin 1100, piercing damage 980, slashing damage 760, and piercing defense, slashing defense around 400, blunt defense around 300. Okay, so how does that compare to Dagger Axe Lancers? So Dagger Axe Lancers, for example, have a little bit more health at 11,000, a little less strength, 18, so they have less units in their troop, cost more leadership, so they, these guys cost 245 versus the 205 of the Companion Calv. They're definitely slower, they're about one point of speed slower. The damage is pretty comparable on the two units, um, and Dagger Axe Lancers have a little bit more defense, about 100 more piercing defense. Um, and a little bit more slashing defense. I think the 50, around 50 more slashing defense. So basically the way I view this is companion cavalry are a little bit squishier, but they have more units, cost less leadership, and are quite a bit faster. They have comparable damage, probably even more damage with the passive buffs they get, which I'll go over soon. Um, and they have a little bit less health. So overall, just think of them as like a little bit squishier than other tier 4 cavalry that just charge in, but they can deal a little bit more damage and they're pretty fast as well. So, but overall pretty comparable stats in general to the most meta tier 4 cab units, which as far as I know would be Dagrax Lancers from last season. Alright, so that's the attributes. Let's hop into the characteristics of this unit. I'm going to cover these a little bit more when I talk about and showcase the abilities of the unit. But to start with, um, these they have a lot of unit traits that I want to go over. So the first one is obviously they just cost 10 less leadership. That's just standard for all seasonal units. The next one is mounted spear blade here. Um, this is basically just saying once they use this storm pound ability, so this is like their heavy damage dealing ability with their spear, they'll charge in with their spear, they'll attack enemies with their spear, and then they're going to lose that spear until they resupply it from the supply point. So they basically get one use of that spear with this ability. And this is just saying once they do that, um, the enemies pierced by that spear will suffer bleeding damage. And then this is just saying what I just said, which is that they'll lose a spear after one use and you can regain it at a supply point. So this is just kind of a lot of text to say essentially that. The next one is even more text, Sworn Guard. The way to think about this is just think about basically Companion Cavalry will get a pretty big passive buff when near your hero. So most of the time you're just going to want these guys following your hero with the C command, uh, the C hotkey. Just have them follow your hero and you're going to be able to take advantage of this passive buff that you get. So they'll get a movement speed increase of 10%, damage taken reduced by 12%. They get increased recovery rate. They also get increased damage and movement speed over time while remaining near your hero, reaching the maximum effect after 15 seconds, and the effect will disappear if they move too far from the hero for 2 seconds. And then whenever you use a skill, they'll come back to your hero, so you don't have to worry too much about continually hitting C on these guys. You can just charge them in, and then they'll immediately come back to your hero after they do that. So just think of this as a major passive buff when they're near your hero, so these guys are always going to want to be following your unit or your hero. And lastly, Imperial Stormhammer. This is just some flavor text, and as far as I can tell, this is basically just to say that the unit behavior, it's not like a bug in the AI, how these guys behave, which I'm gonna showcase in a little bit in the gameplay section, but these guys will kind of disperse and go throughout the enemy unit. It's not just like a normal cab unit, you just charge them in and it's like a straight line. These guys will kind of go all over the place and hit, hit them from the side, charge in from the flanks. Um, it's kind of hard to control their unit, actually, because they kind of go all, all over the place. Um, and I think this checks is basically just saying that that is intended behavior and that it's not just kind of an AI bug that their unit disperses all over the place versus, you know, your normal cab unit will kind of stay cohesive. These guys will kind of go all over the place. So those are the four unit traits there. They have two formations, one dispersed, one wedge. Uh, I'm not going to go over the abilities too much because I'm going to showcase them in a second, but just to 
quickly mention them. Like I mentioned, Storm Pound, that's your main spear damaging ability. So it'll be a charge in, it's a one time use until you resupply him, and it will deal heavy damage to the enemies with their spear. You also have a normal spear charge. It won't do as much damage, but if you don't want to lose that spear, if you want to save it for a next fight, maybe you're taking out some archers, you can use this. And then finally, you have this Zephyr Blade ability. That's kind of your consistent damage. After you after you use your spear, you can still use a short sword. They'll switch to a short sword, and then this will be a short sword ability that they can use to increase their damage as well. So that's kind of the unit orders, unit traits, all that stuff. Let's take a look at the veterancy lines. Um, I'm not going to go through all these, but I did just want to mention here, essentially the top line is going to be a spike damage, like a high initial damage build. So importantly, this will make Storm Pound bleed, deal additional bleed damage. The bottom line is basically increasing the damage and passive abilities of Zephyr Blade. So this is more of a consistent damage build. Like if you don't want to just focus on the Storm Pound ability and you want more consistent damage, you might take this bottom line. But if you just want that initial heavy damage, which I think most people probably will go top line just for that initial burst damage, which Cav is good for, then you'll want to just take this. But if you think they'll just be falling around your hero using their short sword, you might want to go bottom line. So just think top line is high initial charge damage, bottom line is better for consistent damage over time. Um, important other one to note for the top line is this also makes Storm Pound slow for 30 seconds. That's kind of insane. Um, and each level will increase that by 15%. So this is a pretty insane debuff that they apply with Storm Pound, um, slowing enemies for 30 seconds. So that, that also has some utility in there as well. I'm not gonna go through all the rest of these, um, but again, just remember top line, high initial charge damage, bottom line, better for consistent damage over time. All right, so, and then the last thing to mention here, I guess related to doctrines, these guys are special cav, so you won't be able to use a lot of your normal cavalry doctrines. You're gonna have to rely on special unit doctrines and just general doctrines like unit damage, health, things like that. So that's just an important thing to call out. They're not a lancer cav or melee cav. So that's just important to note there for your doctrine usage. But I think that wraps up all of our attributes, characteristics, and all that stuff. Let's go ahead and hop into some footage of their abilities in action, and I'll go over these abilities in more detail. Okay, so for the companion cav abilities, the first thing to notice, you see this red circle around you. This is like that new circle you get with the unit. So that's going to be your passive buff when they're within that circle. So they need to be within the circle to get the passive buff um, that I mentioned in, that, in the previous section. So as long as they're within that circle, it's better when you're mounted. They can just you can just hit C and they'll follow you around. But as long as they're within this red circle, they're going to be getting that passive buff. So you're just basically going to always want to keep them within that circle, preferably at least until you charge. So you'll see I'll keep them within the circle. And then their one ability, that's going to be the spear charge ability that you can use multiple times. So let's just show that here. You charge them in, they'll deal quite a bit of damage. They should eventually come back after using this ability. That's what the text says. So let's see if that happens. Yep, so you can see they slowly return to me. I can also just order them back manually if I want to. So that's the first spear ability. And then our second spear ability is that Storm Pound ability. So let me reform here and show that off. And just to note, now that they've been around my hero longer, their passive buff should be increasing. So they should pretty much be at max damage now that they've been within my hero's radius for at least 15 seconds. So they should be at max damage right now. Okay, so the new unit has spawned in, so I'm going to charge my guys in now to show off the Storm Pound ability. So let's charge them in here, I'm going to use Storm Pound, and they're going to charge in and stick that spear into the enemies, and you see they do a lot more damage than what the one ability did. I know those are archers, but just trust me, they'll just deal more damage. Um, now I'm stuck with my sword, so I'm not going to go back to supply it. If I went back to supply right now, I would get those spear abilities back, but I do just want to show off the Zephyr sword real quick. So let me put them back in the starting area. So you see now I lost my spear abilities. I still have the radius passive buff, but now I'm stuck with my sword. So I won't be able to charge them in, but I do still have this Zephyr Blade ability. So if I charge them in and use that, you can see they still can do a pretty good amount of damage with that. Um, so even with the sword, they can be pretty powerful. Uh, but you see they won't get that Storm Pound ability any longer. So if you build around Storm Blade, just know, or Storm Pound I should say, just know you're going to want to resupply a lot to get that spear back. If you go that bottom line veteran seat, you can just continually use the Zephyr Blade. You don't really have to worry about going back to supply as much. But just to show this off one more time, I take them back to supply here. They get their spears back, and then I can go and charge these guys in one more time. So let's go show that. 
Storm Pound ability, they'll charge in, use Storm Pound. They have a pretty good range on that, as you can see. And then they go into that kind of dispersed formation, and then they'll come back to my hero. So that's kind of the main abilities they have. They have their spear charge, their normal spear charge that does decent damage, storm pound, which is your main damage ability, but you will lose your spear as soon as you use that. And then you're stuck with your short sword, which you can still use to deal decent damage. So you can pretty much use uh, storm pound on cooldown. I would recommend that because uh, your short sword de still does deal a decent amount of damage, but you will probably want to stay with storm pound for the most ideal moment for your main charge attack. So basically when you would use your main charge with other cav, just use your storm pound like that and you should be good. Um, but yeah, that's the three abilities for these guys. So let me hop into some gameplay and I'll kind of show you guys how they work in a real game and give you guys some tips. Okay, so in this first clip, I'm in a one-on-one -on -one situation against a Prefecture Heavy Cab. You can see I'm able to get the drop on him here, so I'm able to flank around and then Storm Pound them from behind. And then I'll switch to my Zephyr Blade and use my Zephyr Blade ability. So I was able to take out a good chunk of them on the initial charge here. And then you'll see I'm able to take out this hero with some help from my hero ability and a good amount of damage from the Companion Cab here. But I just want to point out, this isn't an ideal scenario for them. I still take a lot of damage on the recharge here. So you don't really want to be in a prolonged fight like this against Melee Cab if possible. Ideally, you want to be in more of a flanking position so you can get in and get out in one quick flanking charge if possible. So after that quick one-on-one -on -one fight with the cav I decided to charge my guys out the gate and try to pick up some kills here. So you can see I have them follow my hero to get the passive buff and then storm pound out the gate and then immediately use my zephyr blade ability. I don't even call them back here I just let them use their natural passive ability to come back to my hero. So you can see they're able to pick up a decent amount of kills, take very minimal damage and immediately come back to me where now I'll go heal them again. So you can see how effective they are at little skirmishes like this. So this is a little bit later on after I've healed up my unit and you can see I'm bringing them out to take out these range units. There's one firearm unit and some leftovers of a rattan marksman unit so those are high priority targets for me. So I'm able to bring them out of the gate here, distract the enemy so they chase me instead of seeing my cab come in, charge my cab in with a storm pound and quickly use a zephyr blade ability and then I come clean up these guys with my hero. So even with such a depleted unit, I'm still able to get 20 unit kills here and wipe out these two units. So I do sacrifice myself, but 20 unit kills I think is worth it in this situation. And that just shows you how much damage they can do even with a depleted unit like this. So this next clip is a really good example of how you should and should not play this unit. So you see I have my units on follow my hero here to build up the passive damage and movement speed buff. I'm trying to catch these guys out before they're able to retreat to C. So I spot these units here retreating. It looks vulnerable like a vulnerable pike unit, no support here. So I, I immediately storm pound and Zephyr Blade into these guys. This is a correct way to play this unit, a really good example of skirmishing with them. So I Zephyr Blade and, you're, and you'll see I'm able to easily get these guys out while taking very minimal losses here. So I did a ton of damage there. But instead of going into healing, which is what I should have done here, I immediately try to get into the next fight to help us cap supply. But you'll see I basically suicide myself and units in here for not much gain. So what you should have done there is gotten and healed, got another Storm Pound ability, and then returned to the fight. So that's a good example of what to do and what not to do. This last clip, I just wanted to show off the actual power of this unit, even when you don't play them exactly correct. So I'm going to be flanking around here. I'm building again up their passive buff of movement and damage speed while I'm going through this gate here. And then I immediately spot a group of ISGs running back, as well as some Imperial Javelineers and Zakalian Militia in the back. So I'm trying to try to take out all three of these units. I Storm Pound and Zephyr Blade into the ISGs and Imperial Javelineers, dealing a ton of damage. And then I know they're going to come to me after they destroy those units so that I can take out the Zakalian Militia as well. I misplayed this by getting my hero killed too easily by the chain dart, but even though this clip cuts off a bit earlier, I was able to get a total of 30 troop kills and a lot of those high priority units. So you can just see the power of this unit even when you don't play them exactly correctly. So to summarize my gameplay tips, you'll of course want this unit following your hero to build up that passive buff until you charge in. I would treat the storm pound like a charge on a normal cav, so you want to storm pound and zephyr in, let them return to your hero, and then I would highly recommend resupplying and healing this unit if at all possible before redoing this combo. If you do that, you'll be able to get a ton of damage and kills in while still having most of your unit survive so i'd highly recommend doing that but that's pretty much it it's not too hard to play this unit if you're new to this game please make sure to check out the links i mentioned in the description of this video and if not let me know your thoughts on this unit so far